things I really like about Worcester is the sense of community around the college. So um, under non-COVID times, you could go to hall and you'd sit next to someone and start talking with them and end up getting on like a house on fire. Um, so it's a really, really lovely group of people. It's quite a nice size of kind of, you do have kind of the sense of like community because you do kind of recognise most people, but also within that you do kind of have people that you're closer to, who you maybe don't know as well, um, but you could get to know if you wanted to. From the start, I was told it was a very friendly college. Um, I was told, you know, everybody you meet, they'll always have a smile, say hello, have a chat, and that's really been true. We're really, really lucky to be so central to Oxford and have a lake and the most beautiful gardens. The grounds of Worcester are absolutely beautiful, especially now in summer. Um, and there's loads of really nice walks around the lake, which is really nice if you just need to take a break from work, hang out with a friend, especially in COVID times, it's been a great way to actually get to know people. So I come from quite a rural area um, and I was a bit nervous about moving to this big city. Um, and it's so lovely to have this kind of quiet oasis, of, um, a piece that you can just go and walk around. So I'm from quite a, like a biggish city. I live quite close to the centre and I wanted a similar like vibe at Worcester. And um, you're so close to like all the shops, like two minute walk to anything you'd ever need. But also you're not so in the centre that there's loads of people around all the time. To get to kind of the um, supermarkets, there's a Tesco and a Sainsbury's, they're probably about a five minute walk away. So it's very handy if you've got a massive shop <laughs> and you've got very far to walk. Um, for departments, um, for biology, it's about maybe a 10, 15 minute walk. It depends how late you are and how fast you can run sometimes. <laughs> it's also only about five, 10 minutes from the train station. And that's super handy for, you know, if you've got any guests coming around or you're off somewhere. My favorite spot is Nuffield Lawn, um, cause it's, they recently they put big marquees out there with like little fairy lights that um, light up when it's dark. Um, and it's just so beautiful. You can see some of the gardens, um, some of the, what we call cottages, which are very like, it's one of the oldest parts of college um, and it's really beautiful buildings and really beautiful plants and people like go and sit on the lawn and study and occasionally there's a few ducks that wander over so that's always a plus. My favourite spot is a bench very close to my current building which overlooks one small bit of the lake and in the last month the swan couple have built a nest right by the banks uh, right like really just right by where the bench is and that's a really lovely spot uh, to just sit and contemplate and or ch ch chat to a friend and relax. I would say there's a lot of choice in Worcester accommodation. So you get a lot of say kind of what facilities you want and kind of where you want to be in college. You do share kitchens, sometimes share bathrooms. That's often in first year, but it's really not a problem. It's actually quite nice to be able to kind of have shared spaces with friends. Um, accommodation in Worcester is um, like based on the grading system. Um, so it tends to be the higher grades get access to a kitchen and the lower grades um, can get food for cheaper in hall. Um, so in first year I didn't have a kitchen so I ate in hall quite a lot but the whole food was really really good um, and this year I do have a kitchen which I share with three of the people and our kitchen is massive compared considering there's only four of us in there it's huge. So I share a kitchen with five other people it's, it's absolutely great there's a dishwasher uh, which I know is quite privileged actually in, in uni, uni kitchens um, and then I think we have two fridges for like six people which is Pretty great, uh, pretty crazy actually. Um, and uh, basically, anything you need really. So I've I've lived in a grade one room and then two different grade three rooms. And I'd say the quality of the room in terms of furnishing, in terms of natural light, I'd say it's been really similar. I've had shared bathrooms in both households, uh, which for me has not been a problem. Yeah, it's been a mix of different facilities, but overall um, I've been really happy with all my rooms and my current building has a really good location on the college site and I have lovely views and we're very lucky to have a kitchen balcony 
uh, which not all of the buildings do. So even though I don't have the perks of an ensuite, uh, there's other things that come, come, come with the place. I live in the Nash building and my kitchen overlooks the orchards. Yes, the orchards. Um, and we um, currently Worcester, um, there are a couple of foxes that live here and they've got cubs. And you sit in the kitchen window um, the sun streaming in, looking out at the beautiful old buildings and seeing fox cubs playing in the orchard. Um, and it is very distracting when I'm trying to work, but absolutely magical. I really like that Worcester has a mix of accommodation on site that means that people from different year groups often live on in college. So I'm in my third year right now and I've lived, this, well, this is also my third year living in college. Um, and that's really nice because it means that I have met people from different year groups all through my time here. The food from Hall is absolutely incredible and I often go to Tesco and I buy my shopping for the week and then my mates in grade one are telling me about food hall like for example tomorrow night there's a Mexican themed night and then I quite often end up having to freeze half the food I've bought because I end up going to Hall. Tonight it's this mushroom pinwheel thing, I don't know what it will look like but I'm sure it'll be nice, which is vegan and then the meat option is this pork chorizo stew and then there's a, a vegan stew version as well um, but it really depends, like they change it up so much, there's never really repeats of meals um, and we have like themed nights as well, so Monday night is vegan night and everything is vegan obviously um, and then sometimes they'll do things like Spanish night, we had paella um, when you book for a meal, you can enter your specific um, dietary requirements, your allergies, um, and there's so many options on there. There's like um, no red meat, gluten-free, you're vegan, vegetarian, no soya, no nuts. Um, it, go it goes on, there's so much. It's like under ordinary circumstances, they'd have kind of all of the food like laid out kind of in a buffet style thing, and it'd be labeled kind of which dishes are like vegan, vegetarian, if there's any kind of common allergens and stuff but um, the, all of the like, catering stuff are really friendly, so if you do have anything specific, like just feel free to talk to them and they'll be really accommodating and friendly and helpful. I would say I was a bit unnerved at Formal Hall at first because it seemed really like intense, um, but I've, I've realised now that there's just a few really lovely traditions um, that university like to keep, um, and it doesn't make it like extremely formal. Um, it just makes it quite special and unique events. So so there's an Instagram page, um, so if you search Worcester College Kitchens on Instagram there should be a page that pops up and you can see lots of the really nice photos of the food there and follow along. Um, and then on top of that, food at college has been really reasonably priced as well. So I don't have a kitchen and I found the food prices very reasonable and as everyone's already said, the food has been excellent. You're never going to be alone, I think it's generally, um, in Oxford, uh, which is absolutely wonderful. So there are peer supporters who are other students who are trained to help you. Um, there are two welfare reps on the JCR committee, a male welfare and a female welfare rep. Um, they are just the loveliest people and they run things like Tea at Three, which is just a welfare drop-in event. And if you need to chat, you can just message and ask. There's also a Freshers Welfare rep. Um, and that's somebody who in Freshers Week you can go and speak to if you don't, if you know it's a future based issue and they'll be running lots of things during Freshers Week and throughout Michaelmas to make everybody feel super comfortable settling, it, settling in. I've especially found the student welfare officer um, who, who knows you know, the other admin staff that might be needed in certain situations. That has been really, really useful for me. Um, what I was most worried about is just I budgeted, I planned, I was like, what if something goes wrong? What do I do then? And the thing is, college has provisions. And I think that's something really nice about being in a college environment is the college wants to take, take care of you. I got here and I got given my reading list of quite a few books that I needed physical copies of. And I was like, sort of, it was going to be quite a hefty weight out of my student loan and my budget. Um, so I applied for a book grant and I know that there were 
other schemes sort of to help support educationally and with other things you sort of you can you've application forms to fill out for things like that so there are support out there is support out there if it's sort of additional things like that that you do really need if it's a particular kind of module or stress is about kind of academic skills we have a learning development officer Ria who is really really lovely um, and if you just drop her an email um, and you can arrange an appointment and she can go through stuff like time management, um, exam technique, revision technique, um, all stuff like that. Worcester has three libraries, which is amazing. So we've got the upper library, which is online standards. Um, like university library um, has so many books like I've never really had a problem with finding books and even if it's not there it's probably going to be online but there's a lower library which is like quite grand quite fancy you have to be a bit more quiet there um, but it's a really nice place to work and there's a law library which is also another place to work it's kind of a bit smaller but you're able to work there with friends kind of a bit more loudly. Worcester is the only college where our sports pitches are on site so that's really good for our sports teams and if you're trying to do work you can often see well I can see from my window the sports teams um, trying really hard and really enjoying themselves and that kind of gives me a boost. Um. Not only does Worcester have its own sports fields it also has its own tennis courts and uh, hoops so often there's um, tennis matches and also netball tournaments. There's a small area of the pitch that's uh, just for sort of five-a-side football. There's cricket all all during the summer term. The rest of the year, yeah, often football, rugby. There's a Worcester women's rugby, men's rugby team. Uh, there's a Worcester hockey team. The gym, you have to do a um, induction where they show you the equipment and how to use it. Um, and it's sort of moderately sized, but there's treadmills, weights, a um, couple of rowing machines, I think, um, and a separate load of rowing machines for the rowers that are um, that can be taken outside. Um, but there's everything you need in there, and it's free. There's a multi-faith prayer room um, just next to the Pros Garden. Uh, you'll know how that is when you get to Worcester. Um, then, obviously, the College Col Chapel as well. And then just the chaplain at Worcester, she's absolutely lovely, she's called Tess. Um, if you anything you want to talk to her about, she's always up for it. So, um, so no, it is, it's a great college to be uh, to have faith in. So the JCR is this amazing, lovely Roman college, which has like a TV, a Wii, a table tennis table, lots of sofas and stuff. Um, and you can just go and chill there in the evenings, you can go and play games, watch TV. And um, there's a Wii and um, like sometimes there's Mario Kart tournaments and like Smash Bros tournaments which are always really fun. Um, and there can be like charity events run through those which are really nice as well. Um, it's just like a space where you can go and kind of hang out and kind of use it however you want to really. I remember when I looked around on my open day going to the JCR, they had like a big board of like favourite Love Island couples where lots of people have been meeting up to watch it together. There's a lot of clubs that you can take part in Worcester. Um, I'd say there's generally something for everything. And even if there's you don't feel like there's something or if something's missing, you can go ahead and invent that society. And I'm sure there will be people who will be really willing to kind of come on board with it. Yeah, on the topic of sort of forming your own society, one of our friends, um, uh, they're very passionate about wild swimming. And then we sort of got the Worcester, Worcester College Wild Swimming Society going. More and more people have got on board. So we're freshers, it started out as freshers and then a few second years now and there's even a wild swimming holiday being planned over summer. So yeah, um, sort of whatever tickles your fancy, I'm sure you can get the ball rolling. And even if the, there isn't a college league or if there isn't a college team, you'll often find uh, other Worcester people in university-wide sports and even other societies as well. Although it, the social life has been virtual for most of the year, I've still met lots of people and I've still really enjoyed my time. So uh, alongside the university-wide teaching, um, you'll have college-based teaching as well. 
Um, so for medicine, I have three tutors in college this year um, and who are all so lovely. I found that tutors are really, really accommodating um, and especially with virtual tutors. Um, I've had tutors like, if your workload is too big, we can maybe move a tutor to ninth week, we can spill over. The tutorial system is like the biggest thing that separates Oxford from other universities and that is college based usually. Um, and I think it's a really great way to make sure you understand things. Um, so I do medicine, which is very like concept based. Um, and like understanding things is super, super important for my career, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but the fact that your tutors stay with you for, for us, it's a whole year. Um, and then you get new tutors each year because you change modules. And um, the fact that they know you on an individual basis, so there's only six medics at Worcester, um, means that you can literally ask them about anything and they'll be able to answer. It's really weird at first, you know, you go in and you're like, wow, I, I do history. And you're like, wow, this person's really prestigious. I've read their book. I've read their wife's book. I, you know, and then you sit down on an armchair and they're like, hi, would you like a cup of tea? I know um, some people can kind of think that Oxford has a reputation where everybody comes from a private school um, or from a particular background. And of course, there are people who do go to private schools, but especially at Worcester, I didn't really find that there was, um, I didn't feel like an odd one at all. There are people from all, so many different backgrounds. So I, it's really not something to worry about. Um, there isn't really sort of one type of person that gets into Oxford. We had our first Freshers' Fall last week. Um, and I don't know, it just is so incredible um, to be here and like experience things that I ha personally haven't experienced before. Um, but also if anybody's worried about not fitting into those things or not understanding like, what, what knife to use or things like that, the majority of people are feeling exactly the same thing. Nobody knows what a fish knife does, don't worry. Um, yeah, you'll be all right, everyone's in the same boat. With what I've seen about fish knives, in the first form I went to, um, I saw a fish knife, I had no idea what it was. Um, I turned to the person next to me and I was like, why have you been given a spatula? I don't understand what it's for. Um, but it was completely fine. They were like, oh no, it's a fish knife, you use it like, for fish. I was like, oh, okay. Um, but like, it's completely fine. Like, No one will judge you if you don't know what something is, if you've never heard of a tradition, or you've never kind of experienced like, a really formal event before. Um, it's just a really nice thing to kind of experience here. At like interviews it can seem like you're just getting kind of analysed and examined but it's really important to remember that in many ways the tutors are selling the course to you. <laughs> you need to kind of think, um, yes it's Oxford, it's got all this kind of mystery around it and these kind of preconceptions but is it right for me, is it what I want, um, is the course kind of what will make me happy because there's no kind of definitive course that's objectively better than other courses it's if the course suits you then Oxford might be the right place obviously applying to Oxford can be really daunting but try to not get put off by things like admission statistics or expectations of people around you and just know that there are places at Oxford and you know you could deserve one of them and so just give it your best go and if you're kind of wondering about taking that leap or whether you'd fit it in as long as you really do enjoy the subject that you're thinking of applying for and you're willing to put in the effort and work hard then absolutely apply and just give it a go.